Goth subculture. The goth subculture is a music subculture that began in England during the early 1980s, where it developed from the audience of gothic rock, an offshoot of the post-punk genre. The name, goth subculture, derived directly from the music genre. Seminal post-punk and gothic rock artists that helped develop and shape the subculture include Susie and the Banshees, The Cure, Joy Division, and Bauhaus. The goth subculture has survived much longer than others of the same era, and has continued to diversify and spread throughout the world. Its imagery and cultural proclivities indicate influences from 19th century gothic literature and gothic horror films. The scene is centered on music festivals, nightclubs and organized meetings, especially in Western Europe. The goth subculture has associated tastes in music, aesthetics, and fashion. The music preferred by the goth subculture includes a number of different styles, for example gothic rock, death rock, post-punk, cold wave, dark wave, and ethereal wave. Styles of dress within the subculture draw on punk, new wave and new romantic fashion as well as fashion of earlier periods such as the Victorian and Edwardian eras, Belle Epoque, or combinations of the above. The style usually includes dark attire, often black, pale face makeup and black hair. The subculture continues to draw interest from a large audience decades after its emergence. The term gothic rock was coined in 1967, by music critic John Stickney to describe a meeting he had with Jim Morrison in a dimly lit wine cellar which he called the perfect room to honor the gothic rock of the doors. That same year, Velvet Underground with a track like All Tomorrow's Parties, created a kind of mesmerizing gothic rock masterpiece according to music historian Kurt Loder. In the late 1970s, the gothic adjective was used to describe a atmosphere of post-punk bands like Susie and the Banshees, Magazine, and Joy Division. In a live review about a Susie and the Banshees concert in July 1978, critic Nick Kent wrote that concerning their music, parallels and comparisons can now be drawn with gothic rock architects like The Doors and, certainly, early Velvet Underground. In March 1979, in his review of magazine's second album Second Hand Daylight, Kent noted that there was a new austere sense of authority in the music, with a dank neo-gothic sound. Later that year, the term was also used by Joy Division's manager, Tony Wilson on 15th of September in an interview for the BBC TV programme Something Else. Wilson described Joy Division as gothic compared to the pop mainstream, right before a live performance of the band. The term was later applied to newer bands such as Bauhaus who had arrived in the wake of Joy Division and Susie and the Banshees. Bauhaus's first single issued in 1979, Bela Lugosi's Dead, is generally credited as the starting point of the gothic rock genre. In 1979, sounds described Joy Division as gothic and theatrical. In February 1980, Melody Maker qualified the same band as masters of this gothic gloom. Critic John Savage would later say that their singer Ian Curtis wrote the definitive Northern Gothic statement. However, it was not until the early 1980s that gothic rock became a coherent music subgenre within post-punk, and that followers of these bands started to come together as a distinctly recognizable movement. They may have taken the goth mantle from a 1981 article published in UK Rock Weekly Sounds, The Face of Punk Gothique, written by Steve Keaton. In a text about the audience of UK Decay, Keaton asked, could this be the coming of punk gothique? With Bauhaus flying in on similar wings could it be the next big thing? In July 1982, the opening of the Batcave in London Soho provided a prominent meeting point for the emerging scene, which would be briefly labeled positive punk by the NME in a special issue with the front cover in early 1983. The term Batcaver was then used to describe old school goths. Independent from the British scene, in the late 1970s and early 1980s in California, Death Rock developed as a distinct branch of American punk rock, with acts such as Christian Death and 45 Grave. The bands that defined and embraced the gothic rock genre included Bauhaus, Early Adam and the Ants, The Cure, The Birthday Party, Southern Death Cult, Specimen, Sex Gang Children, UK Decay, Virgin Prunes, Killing Joke, and The Damned. Near the peak of this first generation of the gothic scene in 1983, the face Paul Rambali recalled that there were several strong gothic characteristics in the music of Joy Division. In 1984, Joy Division's bassist Peter Hook named Play Dead as one of their heirs. If you listen to a band like Play Dead, who I really like, Joy Division played the same stuff that Play Dead are playing. They're similar. By the mid 1980s, bands began proliferating and became increasingly popular, including the Sisters of Mercy, The Mission, Alien Sex Fiend, The March Violets, Small Deutschland 
the membranes, and fields of Nephilim. Record labels like Factory, 480 and Beggar's Banquet released much of this musician Europe, and through a vibrant import music market in the U.S., the subculture grew, especially in New York and Los Angeles, California, where many nightclubs featured gothic-slash-industrial nights. The popularity of 4AD bands resulted in the creation of a similar U.S. label, Project, which produces what was colloquially termed Ethereal Wave, a subgenre of dark wave music. The 1990s saw further growth for some 1980s bands and the emergence of many new acts, as well as new goth-centric U.S. record labels such as Cleopatra Records, among others. According to Dave Simpson of The Guardian, in the 90s, goths all but disappeared as dance music became the dominant youth cult. As a result, the goth movement went underground and mistaken for cyber goth, shock rock, industrial metal, gothic metal, medieval folk metal and the latest subgenre, horror punk. Marilyn Manson was seen as a goth shock icon by Spin. The goth subculture of the 1980s drew inspiration from a variety of sources. Some of them were modern or contemporary, others were centuries old or ancient. Michael Bibby and Lauren Amy Goodlett likened the subculture to a burglage. Among the music subcultures that influenced it were punk, new wave, and glam. But it also drew inspiration from B-movies, gothic literature, horror films, vampire cults, neo-noir science fiction films such as Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, and traditional mythology. Among the mythologies that proved influential in goth were Celtic mythology, Christian mythology, Egyptian mythology, and various traditions of paganism. The figures that the movement counted among its historic canon of ancestors were equally diverse. They included the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844-1900, Comte de Lautremont, 1846-1870, Salvador Dali, 1904-1989, and Jean-Paul Sartre, 1905-1980. Writers that have had a significant influence on the movement also represent a diverse canon. They include Anne Ratcliffe. 1764 to 1823, John William Polidori 1795 to 1821, Edgar Allan Poe 1809 to 1849, Sheridan Lefanu 1814 to 1873, Bram Stoker 1847 to 1912, Oscar Wilde 1854 to 1900, H.P. Lovecraft 1890 to 1937, and Rice 1941. William Gibson, 1948, Ian McEwan, 1948, Storm Constantine, 1956, and Poppy Zebright, 1967. Gothic literature is a genre of fiction that combines romance and dark elements to produce mystery, suspense, terror, horror, and the supernatural. According to David A. Trichter, settings were framed to take place at ruinous castles, gloomy churchyards claustrophobic monasteries, and lonely mountain roads. Typical characters consisted of the cruel parent, sinister priest, courageous victor, and the helpless heroine, along with supernatural figures such as demons, vampires, ghosts, and monsters. Often, the plot focused on characters ill-fated, internally conflicted, and innocently victimized by harassing malicious figures. In addition to the dismal plot focuses, the literary tradition of the Gothic was to also focus on individual characters that were gradually going insane. English author Horace Walpole, with his 1764 novel The Castle of Otranto is one of the first writers who explored this genre. The American Revolutionary War era American Gothic story of the Headless Horseman, immortalized in the legend of Sleepy Hollow, published in 1820 by Washington Irving, marked the arrival in the new world of dark. Romantic Storytelling. The tale was composed by Irving while he was living in England, and was based on popular tales told by colonial Dutch settlers of the Hudson Valley, New York. The story would be adapted to film in 1922, in 1949 as the animated The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, and again in 1999. Throughout the evolution of the goth subculture, classic romantic, gothic and horror literature has played a significant role. E. T. A. Hoffman 1776 to 1822, Edgar Allan Poe, 1809 to 1849, Charles Baudelaire, 1821 to 1867, H. P. Lovecraft, 1890 to 1937, and other tragic and romantic writers have become as emblematic of the subculture as the use of dark eyeliner or dressing in black. Baudelaire, in fact, in his preface to Les Fleurs du Mal, Flowers of Evil, 
penned lines that could serve as a sort of goth malediction. Poem say la nuit. Loi charged on plur in blanter, il rev di chafods en fumant sun hookah. Tu le cane, lecture, say monster daily ca, hypocrite lecture, mon semblable, mon frere. It is boredom, an eye brimming with an involuntary tear, he dreams of the gallows while smoking his water pipe. You know him, reader, this delicate monster, hypocrite reader, my twin, my brother. Less than slash poem. The Gothic subculture has influenced different artists, not only musicians, but also painters and photographers. In particular their work is based on mystic, morbid and romantic motifs. In photography and painting the spectrum varies from erotic artwork to romantic images of vampires or ghosts. There is a marked preference for dark colors and sentiments, similar to Gothic fiction. At the end of the 19th century, painters like John Everett Milley and John Ruskin invented a new kind of Gothic. Some people credit Jealousy Screaming Jay Hawkins, perhaps best known for his 1956 song I Put a Spell on You, as a foundation of modern goth style and music. Some people credit the band Bauhaus' first single Bela Lugosi's Dead, released in August 1979, with the start of goth subculture. The British sitcom, The IT Crowd featured a recurring goth character named Richmond Avenel, played by Noel Fielding. Fielding said in an interview that he himself had been a goth at age 15 and that he had a series of goth girlfriends. This was the first time he dabbled in makeup. Fielding said that he loved his girlfriends dressing him up. Notable examples of goth icons include several band leaders, Susie Sue, of Susie and the Banshees, Robert Smith, of The Cure, Peter Murphy, of Bauhaus, Ross Williams, of Christian Death, Jonathan Melton aka Johnny Slut, of Specimen, who created the Batcave outfit and styling, Ian Curtis, of Joy Division, and Dave Vanian, of The Damned. Some members of Bauhaus were, themselves, Fine art students or active artists. Nick Cave was dubbed as the Grand Lord of Gothic lushness. Nico is also a notable icon of goth fashion and music, with pioneering records like the Marble Index and Desert Shore and the persona she adopted after their release. One female role model is the Ada Bra, the 1910s femme fatale known for her dark eyeshadow. In 1977, Karl Lagerfeld hosted the Soiree Mort Noir Noir Party, specifying to new tragic noir absolument obligatoire. Black tragic dress absolutely required. The event included elements associated with leather man style. African and Caribbean influences on Gothic style are often missing from conversations. Jealousy screaming Jay Hawkins used voodoo imagery mixed with spooky theatrics to create a unique style, positioning him as one of the first Goths. He would often use on stage props that reflected his Goth and voodoo style, such as skulls, staffs, candles, tombstones, and bones. Susie Sue was particularly influential on the dress style of the gothic rock scene. Paul Morley of NME described Susie in the Banshee's 1980 gig at Futurama. Susie was, modeling her newest outfit, the one that will influence how all the girls dress over the next few months. About half the girls at Leeds had used Sue as a basis for their appearance, hair to ankle. Robert Smith, Musidora, Bela Lugosi, Betty Page, Vampira, Morticia Adams, Nico, Ross Williams, David Bowie, Lux Interior, Dave Vanian, are also style icons. The 1980s established designers such as Drew Bernstein of Lip Service, while the 1990s saw a surge of U.S.-based Gothic fashion designers, many of whom continue to evolve the style through the current day. Style magazines such as Gothic Beauty have given repeat features to a select few Gothic fashion designers who began their labels in the 1990s, such as Cambriel, Rose Mortem, and Tyler Ondine of Heavy Red. Gothic fashion is marked by conspicuously dark, antiquated and homogeneous features. It is stereotyped as eerie, mysterious, complex and exotic. A dark, sometimes morbid fashion and style of dress. Typical Gothic fashion includes a pale complexion with colored black hair and black period style of clothing. Both male and female goths can wear dark eyeliner and dark fingernail polish, most especially black. Styles are often borrowed from punk fashion and minus more currently minus from the Victorian and Elizabethan periods. It also frequently expresses pagan, occult or other religious imagery. Gothic fashion and styling may also feature silver jewelry and piercings. Ted Polham has described goth fashion as a profusion of black velvets, lace, fishnets and leather tinged with scarlet or purple, accessorized with tightly lacid corsets, gloves, precarious stilettos and silver jewelry depicting religious or occult themes.
Pomposities, in contrast to the LARP-based Victorian and Elizabethan pomposity of the 2000s, the more romantic side of 1980s trad goth minus mainly represented by females minus was characterized by new wave slash post-punk oriented hairstyles, both long and short, partly shaved and teased, and street compliant clothing, including black frill blouses, midi dresses or T-length skirts, and floral lace tights, Dr. Martens, spike heels, pumps, and pointed toe buckle boots, winkle pickers, sometimes supplemented with accessoires such as bracelets, chokers and bib necklaces. This style, retroactively referred to as ether goth, took its inspiration from Susie Sue and mid-1980s protagonists from the 4AD roster like Liz Fraser and Lisa Gerard. The New York Times noted, the costumes and ornaments are a glamorous cover for the genre's somber themes. In the world of goth, nature itself lurks as a malign protagonist, causing flesh to rot, rivers to flood, monuments to crumble and women to turn into slatterns, their hair streaming and lipstick askew. Sintra Wilson declares that the origins of the dark romantic style are found in the Victorian cult of mourning. Valerie Steele is an expert in the history of the style. God fashion has a reciprocal relationship with the fashion world. In the later part of the first decade of the 21st century, designers such as Alexander McQueen, Anna Suai, Rick Owens, Gareth Pugh, and Amula Maester, Philip Plon, Heidi Sleeman, John Richmond, John Galliano, Olivier Laskins and Yoji Yamamoto brought elements of goth to runways. This was described as old goth by Cynthia Wilson in the New York Times. Thierry Mugler, Claude Montana, Jean-Paul Gaultier and Christian Lacroix have also been associated with the fashion trend. In spring 2004, Ricardo Tissai, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Raph Simons and Stefano Bellotti dressed their models as glamorous schools dressed in form-fitting suits and coal-tinted cocktail dresses. Swedish designer Helena Horstedt and jewelry artist Hannah Hedman also practice a goth aesthetic. Gothic styling often goes hand in hand with aesthetics, authenticity and expression, and is mostly considered to be an artistical concept. Clothes are frequently self-designed. In recent times, especially in the course of commercialization of parts of the goth subculture, many non-involved people developed an interest in dark fashion styles and started to adopt elements of goth clothing primarily mass-produced goods from malls, without being connected to subcultural basics, for example gothic music and gothic lifestyle. Within the goth movement they have been regularly described as bozers or mall goths. See also section identity. Some of the early gothic rock and death rock artists adopted traditional horror film images and drew on horror film soundtracks for inspiration. Their audiences responded by adopting appropriate dress and props. Use of standard horror film props like swirling smoke, rubber bats, and cobwebs featured as gothic club decor from the beginning in the Batcave. Such references in bands' music and images were originally tongue-in-cheek, but as time went on, bands and members of the subculture took the connection more seriously. As a result, morbid, supernatural and occult themes became more noticeably serious in the subculture. The interconnection between horror and goth was highlighted in its early days by The Hunger, a 1983 vampire film starring David Bowie, Catherine Deneuve, and Susan Sarandon. The film featured gothic rock group Bauhaus performing Bela Lugosi's Dead in a Nightclub. Tim Burton created a storybook atmosphere filled with darkness and shadow in some of his films like Beetlejuice, 1988, Batman, 1989, Edward Scissorhands, 1990 and the stop-motion films The Nightmare Before Christmas, 1993, which was produced slash co-written by Burton, and Corpse Bride, 2005, which he co-produced. As the subculture became well-established, the connection between goth and horror fiction became almost a cliché, with goths quite likely to appear as characters in horror novels and film. For example, The Craft, The Crow, the Matrix and Underworld film series drew directly on goth music and styled out the dark comedies Beetlejuice, The Faculty, American Beauty, Wedding Crashers and a few episodes of the animated TV show South Park portray or parody the goth subculture. In South Park, several of the fictional schoolchildren are depicted as goths. The goth kids on the show are depicted as fine ninja annoying to be confused with the Hot Topic vampire kids from the episode The Ungroundable in Season 12 and even more frustrating to be compared with the emo kids. The goth kids are usually depicted listening to goth music, writing or reading gothic poetry, drinking coffee, flipping their hair and smoking. 
A prominent American literary influence on the Gothic scene was provided by Anne Rice's reimagining of the vampire in 1976. In the Vampire Chronicles, Rice's characters were depicted as self tormentors who struggled with alienation, loneliness, and the human condition. Not only did the characters torment themselves, but they also depicted a surreal world that focused on uncovering its splendor. These chronicles assumed goth attitudes, but they were not intentionally created to represent the gothic subculture. Their romance, beauty, and erotic appeal attracted many goth readers, making her works popular from the 1980s through the 1990s. While goth has embraced vampire literature both in its 19th century form and in its later incarnations, Rice's postmodern take on the vampire mythos has had a special resonance in the subculture. Her vampire novels feature intense emotions, period clothing, and cultured decadence. Her vampires are socially alienated monsters, but they are also stunningly attractive. Rice's goth readers tend to envision themselves in much the same terms and view characters like Lestat de Lyon Court as role models. Richard Wright's novel Native Son contains Gothic imagery and themes that demonstrate the links between blackness and the Gothic, themes and omegas of premonitions, curses, prophecies, spells, veils, demonic possessions, graves, skeletons are present, suggesting Gothic influence. Other classic themes of the Gothic are present in the novel, such as transgression and unstable identities of race, class, gender, and nationality. The reimagining of the vampire continued with the release of Poppy Z. Bright's book Lost Souls in October 1992. Despite the fact that Bright's first novel was criticized by some mainstream sources for allegedly lacking a moral center, neither terrifyingly malevolent supernatural creatures nor, like Anne Rice's protagonists, tortured souls torn between good and evil, these vampires simply add blood drinking to the amoral panoply of drug abuse, problem drinking, and empty sex practiced by their human counterparts. Many of these so-called human counterparts identified with the teen angst and goth music references therein, keeping the book in print. Upon release of a special 10th anniversary edition of Lost Souls, Publishers Weekly the same periodical that criticized the novel's amorality a decade prior, deemed it a modern horror classic and acknowledged that Bright established a cult audience. Neil Gaiman's graphic novel series The Sandman influenced goths with characters like The Dark, Brooding Dream and his sister Death. The 2002 release 21st Century Goth by Mick Mercer, an author, noted music journalist, and leading historian of Gothic rock, explored the modern state of goth scene around the world, including South America, Japan, and mainland Asia. His previous 1997 release, Hex Files, The Goth Bible, similarly took an international look at the subculture. In the U.S., Propaganda was a gothic subculture magazine founded in 1982. In Italy, Versacrum covers the Italian goth scene, including fashion, sexuality, music, art and literature. Some magazines, such as the now-defunct Dark Realms and Goth is Dead included goth fiction and poetry. Other magazines cover fashion, for example, gothic beauty, music, for example, severance, or culture and lifestyle, for example, alt house Z. October 31, 2011 ECW Press published the Encyclopedia Gothica written by author and poet Lisa Ladusser with illustrations done by Gary Pullen. This non-fiction book describes over 600 words and phrases relevant to goth subculture. Visual contemporary graphic artists with this aesthetic include Gerald Brom, Dave McKean, and Trevor Brown as well as illustrators Edward Gorey, Charles Adams, Lauren Morgan Richards, and James O'Barr. The artwork of Polish surrealist painters Gisław Beksinski is often described as Gothic. British artist Anne Sedworth published a book on Gothic art in 2007. The goth scene continues to exist in the 2010s. In Western Europe, there are large annual festivals mainly in Germany, including Wave Gothic Treffen, Leipzig and Maraluna, Hildesheim, both annually attracting tens of thousands of attendees. The Loomis Gothic Festival, more commonly known as Loomis, is the largest festival dedicated to the goth subculture in Finland and the northernmost gothic festival in the world. The Ukrainian festival Yedinoki, Chornarada, Children of the Night, is the biggest gothic event in Ukraine. Goth events like Ghoul School and Release the Bats promote death rock and are attended by fans from many countries, and events such as the Drop Dead Festival in the U.S. attract attendees from over 30 countries. The Whitby Goth Weekend is a twice yearly goth music festival in Whitby, North Yorkshire, England. In the U.S., events such as Bats Day in the Fun Park celebrate the culture, as well as the Goth Cruise, and the Gothic Cruise. In the 1980s, 
Goths decorated their walls and ceiling with black fabrics and accessories like rosaries, crosses and plastic roses. Black furniture and cemetery-related objects like candlesticks, death lanterns and skulls. In the 1990s the interior design approach of the 1980s was replaced by a less macabre style. Since the late 1970s, the UK goth scene refused traditional standards of sexual propriety and accepted and celebrated unusual, bizarre deviant sexual practices. In the 2000s, many members, claim overlapping memberships in the queer, polyamorous, bondage discipline slash sadomasochism, and pagan communities. Though sexual empowerment is not unique to women in the goth scene, it remains an important part of many goth women's experience, the Essene celebration of active sexuality enables goth women, to resist mainstream notions of passive femininity. They have an active sexuality approach which creates gender egalitarianism within the scene, as it allows them to engage in sexual play with multiple partners while sidestepping most of the stigma and dangers that women who engage in such behavior outside the scene frequently incur, while continuing to, see themselves as strong. Men dress up in androgynous way. Men gender blend, wearing makeup and skirts. In contrast, the women are dressed in sexy feminine outfits they are highly sexualized and which often combine corsets with short skirts and fishnet stockings. Androgyny is common among the scene. Androgyny and goth subcultural style often disguises or even functions to reinforce conventional gender roles. It was only valorized for male goths, who adopt a feminine appearance, including makeup skirts and feminine accessories to enhance masculinity and facilitate traditional heterosexual courting roles. While goth is considered a music-based scene, to be goth implies much more than shared musical tastes, it is, an aesthetic, a particular way of seeing and of being seen. Observers have raised the issue of to what degree individuals are truly members of the goth subculture. On one end of the spectrum is the uber-goth, a person who is described as seeking a pallor so much that he or she applies, as much white foundation and white powder as possible. On the other end of the spectrum another writer terms posers, goth wannabes, usually young kids going through a goth phase who do not hold to goth sensibilities but want to be part of the goth crowd. It has been said that a mall goth is a teen who dresses in a goth style and spends time in malls with a hot topic store, but who does not know much about goth subculture or its music, thus making him or her a poser. In one case, even a well-known performer has been labeled with the pejorative term, a number of goths, especially those who belonged to this subculture before the late 1980s, reject Marilyn Manson as a poser who undermines the true meaning of goth. The BBC described academic research that indicated that goths are refined and sensitive, keen on poetry and books, not big on drugs or antisocial behavior. Teens often stay in the subculture into their adult life and they are likely to become well-educated and enter professions such as medicine or law. The subculture carries on appealing to teenagers who are looking for meaning and for identity. The scene teaches teens that there are difficult aspects to life that you have to make an attempt to understand or explain. The Guardian reported that a glue binding the goth scene together was drug use, however, in the scene, drug use was very. Goth is one of the few subculture movements that is not associated with a single drug in the way that the hippie subculture is associated with cannabis and the mod subculture is associated with amphetamines. A 2006 study of young goths found that those with higher levels of goth identification had higher drug use. The goth scene is often described as nonviolent. However, two non-peer-reviewed studies by the ASHA concluded a higher-than-average propensity toward violence, and for one of the papers, self-harm, within the goth subculture. In the weeks following the 1999 Columbine High School massacre, media reports about the teen gunman, Harrison Kleefeld, portrayed them as part of the gothic cult. An increased suspicion of goth subculture subsequently manifested in the media. This led to a moral panic over teen involvement in goth subculture and a number of other activities, such as violent video games. Harrison Klebold had initially been thought to be members of the Trenchcoat Mafia, an informal club within Columbine High School. Later, such characterizations were considered incorrect. Media reported that the gunman in the 2006 Dawson College shooting in Montreal, Quebec, Kim Beersing Gill, was interested in goth subculture. Jill's self professed love of goth culture was the topic of media interest, and it was widely reported that the word goth, in Jill's writings, was a reference to the alternative industrial and goth subculture rather than a reference to gothic rock music. Gill, who committed suicide after the attack, wrote in his online journal, 
I'm so sick of hearing about jocks and preps making life hard for the gops and others who look different, or are different. Gill described himself in his profile on VampireFreaks.com as, Trench, the angel of death and he stated that metal and goth kick ass. An image gallery on Jill's VampireFreaks.com blog had photos of him pointing a gun at the camera or wearing a long black trench coat. Mick Mercer stated that Gill was not a goth. Never a goth. The bands he listed as his chosen form of ear bashing were relentlessly metal and standard grunge, rock and goth metal, with some industrial presence. Mercer stated that Kim Veer Gill listened to metal, he had nothing whatsoever to do with goth and further commented I realize that like many neos, neophyte, Kim Veer Gill may even have believed he somehow was a goth, because there, neophytes, only really noted for spectacularly missing the point. In part because of public misunderstanding surrounding gothic aesthetics, people in the goth subculture sometimes suffer prejudice, discrimination, and intolerance. As is the case with members of various other subcultures and alternative lifestyles, outsiders sometimes marginalize goths, either by intention or by accident. Actress Christina Hendricks talked of being bullied as a goth in school and how difficult it was for her to deal with societal pressure. Kids can be pretty judgmental about people who are different. But instead of breaking down and conforming, I stood firm. That is also probably why I was unhappy. My mother was mortified and kept telling me how horrible and ugly I looked. Strangers would walk by with a look of shock on their face, so I never felt pretty. I just always felt awkward. Prejudice moves people into circles of bonding where they share these similar experiences and are accepted. Young gops have to define themselves and learn beauty is an aspect of cultural relativism. On August 11, 2007, a couple walking through Stubby Lee Park in Bickup, Lancashire, England were attacked by a group of teenagers because they were goths. Sophie Lancaster subsequently died from her injuries. On April 29, 2008, two teens, Ryan Herbert and Brendan Harris, were convicted for the murder of Lancaster on given life sentences, three others were given lesser sentences for the assault on her boyfriend Robert Maltby. In delivering the sentence, Judge Anthony Russell stated, this was a hate crime against these completely harmless people targeted because their appearance was different to yours. He went on to defend the Goths community, calling Goths perfectly peaceful, law-abiding people who pose no threat to anybody. Judge Russell added that he recognized it as a hate crime without Parliament having to tell him to do so and had included that view in his sentencing. Despite this ruling, a bill to add discrimination based on subculture affiliation to the definition of hate crime in British law was not presented to Parliament. In 2013, police in Manchester announced they would be treating attacks on members of alternative subcultures, like Goths, the same as they do for attacks based on race, religion, and sexual orientation. A study published on the British Medical Journal concluded that identification as belonging to the Goth subculture, at some point in their lives, was the best predictor of self-harm and attempted suicide, among young teens, and that it was most possibly due to a selection mechanism. Persons that wanted to harm themselves later identified as Goths, thus raising the percentage of those persons who identify as Goths. According to The Guardian, some Goth teens are at more likely to harm themselves or attempt suicide. A medical journal study of 1,300 Scottish school children until their teen years found that the 53% of the Goth teens had attempted to harm themselves and 47% had attempted suicide. The study found that the correlation was stronger than any other predictor. The study was based on a sample of 15 teenagers who identified as goths, of which 8 had self-harmed by any method, 7 had self-harmed by cutting, scratching or scoring, and 7 had attempted suicide. The authors held that most self-harm by teens was done before joining the subculture, and that joining the subculture would actually protect them and help them deal with distress in their lives. The authors insisted on the study being based on small numbers and on the need of replication to confirm the results. The study was criticized for using only a small sample of goth teens and not taking into account other influences and differences between types of goths by taking a study from a larger number of people. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.